Welcome to a Nature Sketch Crates Mountain Sweet Pitcher Plant step-by-step -step painting instructions video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint the Mountain Sweet Pitcher Plant using the Nature Sketch Crates step-by-step -step painting instructions. First, collect all your materials and make sure they're ready to go. Remember, this is just a sketch. Relax, have fun, and don't worry too much if you think you made a mistake. Let's get started. Step one, transfer the image to the watercolor paper. Let's take your transfer image, place it on top of your watercolor paper. Go ahead and add some tape to the side on top of the transfer image and tape it to the back of the watercolor paper. Place your graphite transfer paper dark side down, light side up on top of the watercolor paper. And then just close that down. Now you're ready to trace over the lines. Go ahead and start anywhere you like and trace right over those lines. Don't worry too much about getting them exact. This is just a sketch and you'll have a chance to redefine the edges of the image later as well. Once you've added a couple lines, go ahead and check to make sure that they're transferring properly. You want to use the medium pressure to have those lines go ahead and show up. And if your paper is light side down, they won't transfer at all. Just make sure it's dark side down. And go through and just trace over all of those lines to transfer them. You can put on some music or an audiobook or maybe a podcast. And if you get interrupted, you don't have to finish this. You can put it to the side and come back to it later. So just go through and trace over all those lines. It's good to go ahead and flip the image up and down a few times so you can see if you miss any lines. I always end up missing something. Sometimes I have to add it in afterwards, but it's a good way to try to catch any errors. And this is a sketch, so it's not that big of a deal anyway. I think I have all the lines transferred for the main image. I'm going to go ahead and transfer the common name and scientific name. You could also add in these hole punch lines, but those can also be added at any time later as well. I'm just going to go ahead and add in the common name and scientific name. The best way to add the common name is to outline it. Now that we have all the lines transferred, you can remove the graphite paper, save it for later, it can be reused many, many times and then gently remove the tape from the back of the watercolor paper. You can save the tape to the side, I will use it as well. And this transfer image can be saved as well to protect your watercolor paper while you're painting from your hand smudges. I'm going to use the kneaded eraser to erase any unwanted marks or smudging left behind from the graphite transfer paper. You can also use this to lighten marks just by gently smudging it and dragging it over your image and those graphite marks. But you'll want to be able to see these so you can use them and refer to them when you draw the lines in again at the end. And once you're done, you can move on to step two. Step two, paint in the wettest, lightest layer of the pitcher plant yellow. So you'll want to mix the pitcher plant yellow. It's 1H Hansa Yellow Light. 
make sure to shake it up because sometimes the paint pigment can settle. Take one, two drops. You can use more or less if you like. Since we're not mixing it with anything, we're just mixing it with water. And add some water from your water brush by adding pressure to the barrel to get it really wet and light. Or you may be using a paintbrush, regular paintbrush. In that case, just add some water from your cup. Dab it on your towel and then check it on your scrap paper. I think that looks pretty good because we're gonna use the wettest, lightest color, which is the less concentrated, the A color, and pick up a little bit more, dab it on my towel and then add it to the leaf here. And I'm just gonna put a single layer of paint or a single wash over the entire leaf. And if I need, I can just pick up a little bit more color at any point and add it. Always dabbing off onto my towel before applying it to my painting. I'm gonna paint onto the stem here as well and these little leaves at the bottom. Also adding a little bit of this color, a pitcher plant yellow to the stem. And add it to the bracts to the area holding the anthers, the central area here, and the style. And once you have added all the paint, you can let it dry and then move on to step three. Step three, paint in the pitcher plant green and violet. So mix one drop of the 30H quinacridone violet and you'll just be adding some water to that to create a light, wet color. So not as concentrated. The color without any water color added is very concentrated and dark and deep. So you want to add a lot of water from your brush or your cup, whatever you're using. And test it out on your paper. It looks like a good color to me. So I will go ahead and add that. I'm going to paint it in as I see in the image in step three. So I'll be adding it to all the sepals. And making sure to avoid the bracts. If you get it in there a little bit, it's okay. And we'll be adding it to all the petals as well. So just doing a single layer over that. And anytime you need, just pick up more paint from your palette. If you get outside the lines a little bit, don't worry too much about that. Lastly, I'm going to add it to the stem. I just picked up a little bit more paint and I'm going to just paint on the outside edge of this stem because it's going to create a little bit of a wash. I'm going to dab the paint off of my brush and then with a wet brush just kind of pull it down so it washes lightly over that. I got a little bit out of the lines again. This is a sketch so 
You don't need to worry too much about any lines that your paint may have left or getting outside the lines. We can redefine those things later. Next, we'll want to mix the pitcher plant green that has one drop of the turquoise blue, 34H. and 13 drops of the 1H Hansa Yellow Light. And I want to mix that up, a little bit of water. going to be using D, the very light wet wash. So once you get it light enough, that means not as concentrated, so it has more water added to it and the palette. You can use that color, pick up that color, and add it starting at the bottom left and then gradually working up you'll get have naturally less pigment but if you have too much you can dab it on your towel again you'll have less pigment on your brush as you work your way up so it'll create a gradual gradient if it's too dark just dab some paint off i had a little bit too much on my brush so that creates a little gradient going all the way up the leaf. This tube-like shape here. And you want to add a wash over the little leaves here. Just a single layer. Just a light. Maybe a little lighter than you started at the bottom here. And a little bit inside as part of the leaf as well. I'm going to dab it off on my towel and just kind of let it spread through so it's a little darker in the center and a little lighter on the edges. And lastly, I'll add a little bit of D to the style stem and bracts. Just add a little bit in here. Stem. Just a very light amount. And then let it dry and move on to step four. Step four, paint in the pitcher plant magenta. So you'll use eight drops of the quinacrylate Cardone Violet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one drop of the 21H sepia. Mix that up. And we're going to be using G, which is a medium concentrated, so not super wet, but not really dry. So it has a medium amount of water added to it. Dab it off onto my towel and check it on my scrap paper. I think that looks like G, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. And I'm going to add it to the petals and the stem as seen above, as well as the sepals.
Once you're finished, you can let it dry and move on to step five. So first you want to mix the pitcher plant red. It's one drop of quinacridone violet 30H. And eight drops of the red oxide. One, two, three, four, five, six, do you have enough? Seven, eight. Go ahead and mix that up and we'll be painting I, which is the wettest, lightest, least concentrated. So you want to pull a little bit of this paint to the side and add some water to it. Dab it onto your towel and then test it on your paper. The color looks good to me. And so you go ahead and paint that onto the sepals, petals, and the stem, and to the vein or areolations on the leaf. Next, we can paint in a drier, darker, more concentrated pitcher plant green, E, as seen in the image above. So you can go ahead and pick that up. And the paint you just put down should dry fairly quickly because it was a very minimal amount put down, but make sure it's dry before you add the paint. And maybe you want to start on the flower stem first and the bracts. This dial. And that's a little dark in the style, so I'm going to add a little, take the paint off the brush and just add a little bit of water. It's a sketch that so doesn't need to be exact or it's exactly the same every time. and it's watercolor as well, so it gets a little unpredictable. I'm gonna add it here as well. And you'll probably notice that your paint is much more vibrant than on the paper printout. I find that every time I paint, this turns out a little bit different. So yours, I'm sure, will look a little different as well. Just adding it in, starting with the darker area and then moving into the lighter areas to kind of start creating a little bit of that gradient again. And you can add more if needed. And you can let it dry and add more if you need to do that as well. And always make sure to pick up more paint whenever you need it. Just make sure you dab it onto your towel before you add it to your paper. Make sure you don't have too much paint or too much water. And anytime you have too much paint or too much water, when you put it down onto your painting, just go ahead and dab it on your towel to control that. I already think I'm constantly moving my brush from palette to towel to painting to towel to palette while I'm doing this. You need to soften any of the edges. Just take the clean brush, wet brush, and just go over those edges and soften them out a little bit. And you'll let this dry and move on to step six. 
step six, add a drier, darker pitcher plant magenta and red as needed. So let's start with a little bit of the pitcher plant red. It's going to be that very dark concentrated J. And I'm going to add it to these veiny areolations. Just painting over all of those lines. Some of these lines are a little bit more darker and concentrated than others. You can do this in two ways. You can use a slightly lighter pressure or you can put, pick up a paint that's a little more concentrated or drier, or you can put a bunch of paint down on a lot of these lines kind of sparingly and then go over the other ones once the paint starts to dry out, as you can see it's doing right now. And it'll just kind of get a little less concentrated naturally as it runs out of paint pigment. Then take some H, so the pitcher plant magenta, and I want a very dry concentrated color of that, so make sure to test that on my test strip and pick up a little bit more and add it to the flower. Here in the stem, a little bit in the sepals and make sure to add it to the petals as well. And soften some of the edges and add a gradient if you like, or you can just leave it as is. And go ahead and add these layers as much as needed, slowly and as much as needed. at it a few times just to see if I like where it's at. And I like how the color looks compared to step six and my final reference image. Again, it's probably going to be a lot lighter and vibrant than the reference image because when a print is made, it's not going to show up all that bright vibrancy. So I'm going to let this dry and then move on to step seven. Step seven, add ink lines. Use the 005 black micron to add the outlines. It's basically all the lines you added when you transferred the image in step one. And you can refer to either your transfer drawing image or your final image for those lines or A and step seven. So just go ahead and go through and draw in all of those lines. Next, take the 01 black micron to thicken some of the lines and write in the scientific name. Mm -hmm. 
now that we're done with our black 01 micron lines, we can use the black 08 micron to add some even thicker lines and fill in the common name. You'll want to refer to step 7B on your step-by-step -step and the final reference image to help you figure out where to put those lines. Let's go ahead and fill those all in. I think I've added all the lines that I need to add. So I'm going to leave it there. If you like, you can add more ink lines and even more paint to bring it to whatever level you'd like. Just remember this is a sketch and it doesn't need to be perfect and it'll be slightly different because this is unique to you. We are done. Great job. You've created a painting that only you could do. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had fun and had a chance to relax a little. Next, you have some options. You can punch holes in this art and add it to your sketchbook. You can frame it, you can gift it. Also make sure to share it on our Facebook fan art page. I'd love to see it. Check out the Nature Sketch Crate website for updates on future lessons and to shop for the crates. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel.